whenever we manage a project it is very important that we look at value as the most important part value that we will deliver to the customer value that we will deliver to the users we should work with an urgency to deliver as much value as possible and as early as possible hello my name is amit i am a pmp trainer at adjust education services we are running a series where we will cover all the 35 tasks from the examination content outline for pmp we have already covered the 14 tasks from people domain and now we are starting from process domain today we will talk about the first task execute the project with urgency required to deliver value just like all the other 14 tasks we will discuss five questions which are based on the enablers from these tasks it will help you understand what kind of questions can be framed from this particular task while discussing those questions i will also highlight some of the important points which we should note whenever we are trying to solve the pmp questions this way it will help you not only understand how to solve that particular question but any other question which can be framed on the same topic on the same skill sets that will be tested in the exam before we start discussing about the questions let us start to understand what the enablers are so for this particular task the first enabler is to assess the opportunities to deliver value incrementally okay so we should always try to deliver certain value to the customer as early as possible now incremental value delivery iterations and everything you study a lot in hr but how is this applicable in traditional also it is we have to look at how we can deliver value to the users it doesn't have to be business value it doesn't have to be a complete product but how can you provide value to your customers can you divide your work into different phases so that your customers can start using it so you have to look at multiple ways in which you can deliver incremental value to your customer this gives them an opportunity to start using the product as early as possible the second enabler is examining the business value throughout the project so whatever value that we decide that yes these are the values that we want to provide to our customers to our users we should also check are we moving in the same direction or not is it that we are delivering value or something else right that is the second enabler and the third one is to support the team so that they can subdivide the project task they can create mvp they can create prototype and they would understand by minimum effort what kind of value we can deliver so with minimum effort they should be able to understand that yes we are moving in the right direction that's the whole focus of these task so there are three uh, enablers we will see questions on all these three enablers plus we will see two more because we do minimum five questions every task let us dive into the question right away all right so the first question a project manager is managing a software development project where the stakeholders have requested to deploy the product quickly to the end users to learn from the users experience and develop product further exactly what we were discussing so there is a sponsor or the stakeholders who have requested that we should be able to deploy the product as early as possible to the end users so that we can learn from their experience and develop the product further the team members have worked with the stakeholders earlier and they have maintained a good rapport as well so this is an additional information that is available with us now let us this is the information part let's have a look at the question part what should the project manager do to ensure on time delivery of the solution right so there is a very simple situation stakeholders are asking to deliver as early as possible the team has a good rapport with the stakeholder and the question is what should the project manager do to ensure the on time delivery of the solution let's have a look at the choices meet with the stakeholders to agree on the parts of the solution and priorities yes right i have a good rapport i mean my team has a good rapport what do i do i talk to the stakeholders and understand okay what are the parts of solution that you want to deliver first right it's a very good choice we'll keep it then we go to b work with the team for a high level plan of incremental deliveries and quick customer feedbacks okay now this is also a good choice 
where we are discussing with the team members trying to understand how we can do the incremental deliveries and quick customer feedback. But one thing is missing here. We are not talking to stakeholders. Stakeholders have requested something, so we should involve them as well because they would understand the priority from the business side. Team would understand the priority from the technical side. Right? So we should involve both of them. Talking to stakeholders would be better than working with the team alone, not taking into consideration the stakeholders. Because now currently we are talking about the business priorities. So stakeholders take that priority and team, although this is a very good option, but we have a better option so we can eliminate B. Eliminating the choices is a very important step that you would take whenever you are solving PMD exam questions. Because then in that case, when you are confused between two options, you know that B is definitely not correct. So hence, whenever you eliminate, always eliminate only because you have understood completely or 100% sure that that option is not going to be the correct choice. Right. Then we go to C. Have a detailed plan of all the milestones, deliverables and allocation of resources. We can, but first we need to prioritize. The question is asking about prioritization first. So detailed plan will happen a little bit later. Okay. Will it help us in uh, on-time delivery of, of the solution? Yes, it will. But ultimately, we have to also understand the situation at hand, the demand of the situation. right? So detailed plan would be done a little bit later. A is something which is better here. Then we go to D. Ask for additional resources from the sponsor to deliver on time. Right. We want to deliver on time for sure, but do we know that we need additional resources? As of now, nothing in the question tells us that we need additional resources. Right? And hence, we don't have to go to the sponsor. Unless and until I see something in the question which, has, which is very clearly telling me that yes, we would need to do some extra work, we would need to do some extra, put some extra effort, only then I would need extra resources. Otherwise, why? Okay. So D can also be eliminated. A is the best choice. So in this question, we see that the question is talking about a scenario where the stakeholders want us or the team to deliver and deploy the product quickly, as early as possible to the end users. So what should the project manager do to ensure the on-time delivery of the solution? So if I have to ensure this on-time delivery of the solution, I'll talk to the stakeholders. And first, I would agree to what is the solution that they are looking for. Only then I can decide what should I do. So first option A would happen and then option B and C would happen. That is why B and C, although very good choices, but A takes the precedence. Whenever you solve these PMP questions, you should always focus on understanding something which will be applicable in future questions also. That way, by solving one question, you are actually preparing for four to five questions with the twists and turns that might happen in the question. And if you see some concepts, try to understand those concepts as well. It's a very good practice whenever you are preparing for PMP exam. In this question, you see some terms like milestones, deliverables, objectives. What do these things mean? We will discuss this. This question is about the first enabler, which is assessing opportunities to deliver value incrementally. And while discussing this question, we could understand some terms and we should have an understanding of these terms. So let us very quickly look at these terms before we go to question number two. It will help you save some time that you would have spent going to the internet or going through the book or going through a recorded video. Very quickly, what is objective? A goal that the project is trying to achieve. Objective is a goal. This is what you want to achieve. So it provides you the direction. Everybody, if, it is, if they are clear about the objective, they will push the entire project into the same direction. That's what we want. That is what objective is. What are milestones? Milestones are significant point or event on the project timeline. So whenever you are driving a car, you would see milestones right next to your uh, road, right? It tells you that, yes, you have achieved certain things in your journey. So in the project journey, when you have achieved certain uh, a point or an event, then it, it talks about milestone. Okay? It represents a major accomplishment. In your project, you should decide certain milestones and you should celebrate those milestones because it is very important for motivating your team members. What are phases? Phases are distinct stages, very important. Okay? Phases are group of similar activities which are distinct from one another, which means first phase must be complete in all its aspect 
before I can move to the second stage or second phase. That is what our phase is. Very similar to the processes that you study about, 49 processes uh, for traditional approach. Very similar, but there's a difference. Processes do not have to end in all its aspect before we can start another process. We can run multiple processes in parallel. But phases are distinct. Second difference, processes are universal. All those 49 processes are universal. Anybody who is studying for PMP, anybody who is following the PMI approach of those processes would call the process by the same name. But phases are local. We decide what should be the phases name. Okay, Those two differences were important to understand. Then what are deliverables? Something that we deliver. Okay, A tangible output produced as a result of project work. What are tasks? Tasks are the actions that we take. Okay. So it's important to understand these differences. We know it. It's not that we don't know it. You would also know it 100% sure. I am uh, very confident about that, that you know these things. But sometimes what happens is while you are in the rush of taking the exam, you may not focus a lot on what do these exactly mean. See, the question is going to be in three sentences or four sentences. Right? You will have 75 seconds to answer. In that rush, you should not miss the understanding of what these meanings, what these words have as a meaning. Because if I ignore that, I may be thinking in a different way and I may not select the right choice. Okay? Hence, these things are important. Whenever you are solving questions, try to find out all the concepts and learn those concepts. It's not about solving 10,000 questions before you take the PMP exam. Do 300, 400 questions, but do it well. And most importantly, review those questions well. You will save time and this is the faster approach to prepare for your PMP. Question number two. The sponsor has proposed a budget reduction in a project since many other projects have not been able to deliver the expected returns on investment. Whenever you are reading the situation, try to pause for a bit, understand, comprehend the situation and then move forward. It will help. You have to do it very quickly, but it will help. This practice will develop your skill of reading the questions and it will it will improve. The speed will also improve. So what is happening here? Sponsor is asking for a budget reduction because other projects did not deliver value. The project manager sets up a meeting with the sponsor and explained that the majority of those projects have been completed as per expected timelines and budget earlier as well. So sponsor is saying that other projects did not deliver value. Project manager is saying that we did it on time and within the budget. Okay, so there's a mismatch between the discussion. Let's see what, what next is there. The project manager suggested that the issues may stem from the project evaluation and selection process. So project manager says that we are doing our job well. Other projects were also completed on time and within budget. So probably the issue is with selection of the project. So instead of reducing the budget, we should look at better selection of the project. That's what project manager has suggested. Okay, so that's the situation. Sponsor wants to reduce the budget. Manager is saying that we are doing a good job. Probably the selection is wrong. That's the situation. Let's see what the question is. Which of the following techniques the project manager seemed to have utilized? Okay, very rarely you will see such kind of questions in the exam. Okay. Where they are asking you which technique you will use or which document have been used, maybe three to five questions in the exam, not more than that. Okay. More questions would be in the format that we saw in the first question. But still, we should know about it. Definitely, we should know about it. So, let's try to answer this. Which of the following techniques the project manager seem to have used? So, we have to understand that what was the technique used by the project manager when they suggested that it could the issue could be from evaluation or selection process. Let's see. Tuckman ladder. Tuckman's ladder is for team development. That is not discussed in the question. We can eliminate it. Root cause analysis. Probably yes, because we are trying to understand why this issue happened. And that's what the project manager is suggesting here. That the issue of not delivering the value happened probably because of evaluation and selection process. So one of the technique could be root cause analysis that the project manager would have used. We can keep it. Whenever you are 100% sure also about an option, always just park it, see the other two option and ensure yourself that yes, other two options are not better than this, 
only then select the choice. Always read all the four choices. Compare the choices before deciding your answer. Strategic negotiation. Have they done any negotiation in this question? No. Right? There's no negotiation discussed. This is only a, an attempt to tell why this problem might have happened. Okay. So they have project manager has tried to understand the cause of it. They have not done any negotiation yet. So we can eliminate this. Data gathering techniques. Have they used data gathering techniques? Uh, probably not. There's nothing about gathering data or anything. Yes, there is a mention of previous project and other part, but they are not very explicitly talking about data gathering. They are definitely talking about identifying the root cause or the cause of the problem. And hence we will select something which is more close or something which is closer to the question rather than something which is an assumption that yet may, they might have done data gathering techniques and that's why they understood why the problem is. It's all a part of root cause analysis. So we can eliminate D and B becomes the better choice. So in this question, the question was asking what was the technique used in the situation discussed. The situation talked about understanding the cause of a problem. That's why we eliminated all the other choices and we selected the root cause analysis. This was from the enabler number two, which says examine the business value throughout the project. Keep on understanding whether you are delivering value or not. That's what the sponsor did here. And that is the type of question that you might see in the exam. Now, again, we saw a few things in that question. Let's have a very quick, quick recap of what all things we saw. Tuckman's ladder we saw. What is a Tuckman ladder? Tuckman ladder tells us that whenever the strangers come together, whenever you form a team, the entire team would go through multiple stages. Okay, And this Tuckman ladder talks about that ladder of team development, which says that team will start with forming, where there will be formal introduction of where we have come from, what is our background. Uh, every team member will discuss with one another about the previous projects that they did. There will be a formal introduction. That would be the first stage. As soon as they start working, they will start identifying the differences in the style of the working. So that would be the second stage, which is called storming. There would be conflicts, there would be some uh, misunderstandings, there would be some difference in opinions, and people will start noticing the differences in the style of the work that they are doing. That would be the second stage. Once they understood this and they would try to find out a solution, so what they will do, they will try to figure out a way in which, despite the differences, they can work in the project. That stage would be norming stage. Things would normalize. Once the things have normalized, which means people will have understood the way to work with one another, which means they will start performing. Once the job is done, team would be adjourned, team would be removed from the project and moved to some other project. Right? So that would be called adjourning stage. The objective of from a project manager side is to jump from forming to performing very quickly. You cannot jump directly. You will have to go through these stages. But what you can do is you can be proactive about it. You know that the team goes through these stages. So prepare your team. Discuss about the differences while there is a formal introduction itself. So there will be less storming, less time spent in storming stage, less conflicts, less uh, difference in opinion, less disagreements. And people would proactively find out the solution. They will move very quickly to norming stage and they will start performing. That is the intention from project manager which is required. We also saw about root cause analysis. That was our correct answer. Okay, so what is the root cause analysis? Trying to find out what is the reason because of which the problem has grown. Okay, identifying the root cause. One way of doing it is through a fishbone diagram. These look like the bones of fish. Don't worry about what is written there. Okay, if you put a body here, it will look like a fish. Okay, that's why it is called fishbone diagram. You can also call it Ishikawa diagram because the person who decided or who first introduced this fishbone diagram to, to the world, the person's name was Ishikawa. Okay, so root cause analysis is where we are trying to understand why the problem happened. What is the main reason for the problem? Then we also saw data gathering techniques. There are multiple techniques that you can use. You can do benchmarking where you are comparing two products together, right? 
You can also do document analysis where you are looking at a particular document, maybe the previous project, maybe industry policy, maybe government policy and regulations, maybe some project report, maybe some other procedures and processes. You are Whenever you look at a document, you are doing a document analysis. Uh, checklist helps you in standardizing what you want to check. Right? So a checklist will have 10 questions maybe. Okay, And whenever you are talking to a person, whenever you are doing benchmarking, whenever you are doing document analysis, you will always check for these 10 things. So it standardizes the things. So whoever does it, whether you do it, your team member does it, your manager does it, doesn't matter. They will always look for these 10 questions for sure. That's why checklists help us in a great way in gathering the data. Surveys and questionnaires, whenever you are trying to talk to a lot of people, 100, 200, 300, thousands of people, you can release surveys and questionnaires and gather some input from them. If you have to discuss with 15, 20 people, 10, 10, 15 people, however, then you would call it a brainstorming. You will call a, bring a, all the team members or all the responsible people into the meeting and you will discuss about it. That's why it is called brainstorming. Right? There will be a difference of opinion that will be discussed, whatever is there in everybody's brain. Right? That's why it is called brainstorming. Then you will also, you can also have focus group. Brainstorming will give you raw data right? about many different areas of the project. If you want to have some focused discussion, you will call only those subject matter experts and you will have a focus group discussion. For example, you want to discuss finance, legal, uh, market, business, technical, you would call those experts only and have a focused discussion. You can also have one-to-one -one discussion because there would be some introverts in the brainstorming meeting or during focus group who are not very inclined to talk, but they have good information. So you spot them and you have a discussion one-to-one -one with them. Those are called interviews. These are the ways, ways in which you can gather data in the project. What kind of data you would gather? Requirements, stakeholders list, risks, problems that you would identify. Right? There are so many data that you will be gathering throughout the project. You can use these techniques, one or more of these techniques throughout the project. Let's have a look at question number three. A project manager has just been appointed to an agile project which has already completed several sprints. The business requirements list a couple of deliverables to be released at the same time for production. However, there is no clarity with respect to the execution priority. While you read the entire sentence in one go, it is very difficult to comprehend. I deliberately did it because in the last question we discussed about it. We should wait, we should pause for some time. That's the faster way of reading. Although you might think that, okay, if I pause, I'll take more time. But that's the faster way of reading because when you read it once the full sentence, you may not understand it completely. And if you don't understand it completely, then you will have to read the sentences again. That will take more time. Right? So pausing and comprehending is always better. Right? How should we do it? A project manager has just been appointed to an agile project which has already completed several sprints. Okay, so we are midway through the Agile project. Good. The business requirements list a couple of deliverables to be released at the same time for production. So there is a requirement that we should deliver a couple of deliverables at the same time. However, there is no clarity with respect to the execution priority. So we have to deliver two things at the same time, but there is no clarity on the priority. So we don't know the priority of the execution. But we have to deliver two things at the same time that we know and we are doing an agile project. So what should the project manager do in this case? Let's see. Meet with the product owner and the team members to assess each deliverer's value and set execution priorities. The question is saying the two deliverables should be delivered at the same time, which means the release of these two deliverables would be same. But there is no execution priority. Which deliverable will you start first? Which deliverable you will start later? And in this case, we are saying that, okay, let's discuss with the owner, let's discuss with the team and set the execution priority. Nothing like it. What is the problem? The problem is that we don't have execution priority. What is the solution we are providing? Let's discuss and, and bring the priority and develop the priority or decide the priority. Very, very good choice. Then we go to B. Ask the product owner to cancel the release due to the difficulty in executing both deliverables at the same time. First of all, just because we have difficulty, we will not cancel anything. That's not the right attitude. Okay, if it's a difficulty, we'll solve that. We'll make it easy. It will spend some time. We will not cancel the thing just because it is difficult. 
Okay. And second option, can we do that? Can we ask the product owner to cancel this? Right? Because we cannot deliver at the same time. We cannot cancel it. We will say, okay, we'll do it later. But we cannot cancel it. So we can eliminate B. Not a, not a good choice at all. We go to C. Ask the team to start working on that deliverable first, which they can finish faster. That's not how we set the priority. If it said you do that which is higher business value first, it would make sense because we are doing agile project and we are, our approach is to deliver incremental value and highest value first. Right? It would have made sense to deliver the highest business value first rather than saying that whatever you can finish faster, do that. We don't, we don't work like that in agile. We should not. D. Require that the project team execute both the deliverables at the same time. Now, it is possible that we can do it but we don't know whether the team will be able to do that or not. We don't know how many team members are there. We don't know what their capabilities are. We don't know whether they will be able to do it or not. Right? So this is a suggestion that we are providing without the analysis, without the understanding of the situation which we need, without the information that we need. So due to lack of the information, we will eliminate this and choose option. Okay. So in this question, there was a requirement where the two deliverables or a couple of deliverables were to be released at the same time for production, but execution priority was not set. If that is a problem, then that is what we will solve. And that's what option A did. That's why A is better than B, C and D. This was about the third enabler, which is to support the team in subdividing the tasks. That's what we did. We met with the product owner, we discussed with the team and we helped them subdivide the task on how they can decide the priority. So those were the three enablers and we saw three questions. We will see two more questions, four and five, to understand a little bit more about these, this task, what kind of questions can be asked. Okay. Question number four. A project manager is assigned to a project to develop a library management system for a city's central library. Okay, we'll take a pause. We'll understand, okay, we are doing a library management system. Okay, we are developing that. And that's the project manager is doing. The team will create a digital simulation of the library, making it easier for the readers to find the book they want to read. So there is certain value that will be delivered by the work that we are doing. Although the overall understanding is clear, the team isn't clear on the sequence of development. Again, we are talking about the priority, execution priority. We don't know the sequence of development. So the team is developing something good, which will be valuable. What kind of value? If required, then only we'll focus on that. As of now, we should be clear that, okay, team is creating something which is valuable. We don't have to get into the de technical details of what the library management system will do. It will deliver value, that is, that is good enough to know. And the team is not clear on the priority. That's the situation. Let's see. What should the project manager do to gain clarity and maximize the value delivery? That's the question. How would you gain clarity? If it is not clear, then how would the project manager help, help gain clarity? And how it will help in maximizing value delivery? Let's see. Gather the team to create a comprehensive product roadmap. First of all, roadmap is generally not comprehensive. Comprehensive means covering all the details. Product roadmap is at a very broader level. Okay. Roadmap could help us in understanding what should happen when, but comprehensive is making it making me a little bit apprehensive <laughs> whether this could be a correct choice or not. So I'll just park it. If I see a better choice, I'll select that. If I don't see, I may have to choose this. Let's see. B. Create a visual task board with all the relevant stakeholders. What will a task board do? Task board will help us in understanding what are the tasks that we will be doing. Okay. So it will give us an understanding of the task required to be completed. It could talk about some, some timeline, we don't know, we'll again park it. Then we go to option C. This is, this is what will happen in the exam. See, I have created the question, I know the answer. But what are the situations that you will face? What would run in your mind? That is what I'm trying to, trying to understand and trying to discuss. Okay, let's go to option C. Work with the team on the definition of a minimum viable product. All right. Will the minimum viable product help me in understanding the priority? Probably. Because when I decide the minimum viable product, I'll work on that few feature, those few features first, 
which would help me in delivering value the most. Right? So it kind of sets the priority. So I could do that. Option C is a very, very good choice. And now when I compare with A and B, I see a better choice. Comprehensive roadmap, I was anyways confused. Task board, I was confused whether it contains the priority or not. But MVP will definitely tell me what is the priority. And that's what I'm looking at. And I'm trying to maximize the value. So can I help the team in deciding the MVP? You know my product? Yes. It looks like a good choice. So what will I do? I'll now eliminate A and B. See, you will either eliminate the choice if you are 100% sure that it is wrong. Or you would eliminate the choice if you have found something better. So elimination and comparison both work hand in hand whenever you are solving PMP exam questions. So C here looks better than A and B and we'll keep it. Then we go to D. Use spikes to dig deeper into the technical challenges of the product. Do we need to do that? I don't know. Nothing in the question, there's no information in the question suggests that we should have a spike. Spike is taking out some time from your development and work on solving the problem rather than developing the product. So in that team will work on solving that problem for that particular period of time. They will not develop any product because that problem solving is more important than development. Right? So we will not, we don't know whether we need to use the spike or not. So it's a decision that is not backed up by the information. There's no justification for this solution or this decision that we have to take. So we can eliminate this C is a better choice. Right? As we can see, there will be a lot of confusing questions, a lot of confusing options. You will see many questions that, that would look correct, but you have to keep calm. Just park it, you will find a better choice. And when you do, just compare and see, okay, is this a better choice or not? If you believe that, yes, it is a better choice, believe in your preparation and eliminate the other two. D was very easily eliminated because it was wrong. C is the best choice. Okay. Now, in this case, we are looking at few of the terms. If you understand these terms, it is easier to solve. If you don't, then you're probably making a guess. Right? And hence I said, Always try to highlight those important concepts that you solve in a question during practice. During practice, you have a lot of time. I mean, you can take a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time, but you can take a lot of time. Like you do 10 questions and spend one hour understanding those questions. That would do a much better job in, rather than trying to solve 100 questions in, a, in an hour. Okay, you don't need to do that. As I'm saying, quality of your review, quality of the questions, are much more important than the quantity of it. You should definitely do at least one mock exam full, but doing one or two full length mock exam is good enough. Right? You should spend time in reviewing the question, understanding the explanation if the mock exams provide that. We do it for every single question. Uh, understand the explanation, understand the terms, and always look at these terms if you are not clear with it. You should know it. Okay, the way of doing it is, Read through the explanation if there, are, there is an explanation. If not, go to Google, go to chat GPT, look for this, these terms, understand it and move ahead. Okay. Review your question well. I cannot emphasize more on how helpful this is. Okay. Let's very quickly have a look at it to save your time. Okay. What is the roadmap? It gives us a good picture. It gives, gives us a calendar of what is it that we are trying to do when. And as you look at it, these are major features. These are the values that you want to deliver. These are not comprehensive. Comprehensive means in detail. Every single user story, every single feature, every single task might be there. Okay. Roadmap is not comprehensive. Roadmap is overall understanding of the high level features only. Okay. Task board tells us about the task. What is in the to-do stage? What is in progress? What is the uh, verified is? It gives us our present status. When we should do what is not clear here, right? But what is the current status? Which story is in to-do stage? Which story is in progress? Which story is in the verifying verification stage? Which story is already done? Right? This is what you will come to know. It will not tell you about the priority. That's why we eliminated task board by the way. Spike, normal sprint, normal iterations are progressing where you develop the user stories, every sprint and every iteration. Sometimes you might face a problem with a higher value item that you are currently doing and you're not able to complete that user story. And the team believes that instead of taking new user stories, they should first work and solve the problem. Otherwise, it will not get solved. 
so they take out some time which is called spike they will take out some time this is where they will solve the problem complete the user story that was not complete and then again run the normal sprints that's what spike is minimum viable product is something which is a very minimum number of feature which will help you test the idea which means you will always build what is the most important feature first if i take an example of this pen what is the most important feature of this pen the refill right so that refill is my minimum viable product first i would build this i'll give it to my customer i'll give it to my user i'll ask them to start using it they'll start writing they'll feel a discomfort and they'll give me a feedback that they cannot use this for long writing so then i'll give it a casing right and this casing would help them in writing for longer hours i'll improve my product then they will say okay the ink dries very fast i'll give a lid as well right so by using mvp i'll be able to test my most important ideas first okay which help me in priority and that's why we decided in the in the question that mvp is a better choice right so always try to review your questions well spend some time understand the concepts well it will help you immensely what we have done in our mock exam is deliberately put different type of terms in different type of questions as you can see in this question also we could have done this question without talking about these terms also but it is important for your practice and hence we have used it here we have used it in our mock exams so that you are able to see almost everything that you might see in the pmp exam let's look at the last question of the day a project team has informed the scrum master that they will not be able to complete all the user stories decided for a particular release okay scrum master which means leader of the team similar to project manager okay specifically specifically used in scrum framework of agile right? which is which is says that in an agile project team members have come back to the leader of the team to say that we cannot finish the features or functionality that we have decided for a particular release the product owner calls for a meeting with the project team and project manager to discuss how to prioritize the items that can be completed by the team okay so team informed the scrum master product owner said okay let's have a meeting with the team and the project manager as well on decide how, what is the priority with which we should complete okay now let's see the question situation is the team is also confused product, product owner is also calling for meeting project manager is there scrum master is there team member there a lot of people are there in trying to understand the priority that's the situation what is the question what should be used to prioritize the backlog items as i said it will be rare but it, these kind of questions can also be asked don't consider these as situational question these are not okay if you see in any mock exam or any practice questions lot of such questions that is not a good way of creating mock exams right although it present the situation but the answer does not depend on the situation you have to be that smart in understanding which question is good for the project or for pmp right those questions will be called situational questions or scenario based question where the options would change based on the scenario whatever scenario you add here the answer is not going to change what do we use to prioritize the backlog items right technical complexity no business value yes risk to delivery probably estimation accuracy no right whatever be the situation whether scrum master is talking product owner is talking you are doing a scrum framework extreme programming any other project right so this is not a good situation based question which is to say that you will not see a lot of such questions in the exam you might see it and that's why we have kept it for that matter but you will see only 3 to 5 not more than that but it is important to understand these terms hence during practice it is a good thing i'm not saying that that mock exam is bad where you see lot of such questions what i'm saying is then you are not preparing for the actual pmp questions those will also help you learn about project those will also help you learn about the project management but you will not be actually preparing for pmp questions which you will see most so scenario based questions situation based questions are those questions where the answers might change based on the situation 
Okay. In this case, business value is the correct choice because that is what is used to prioritize the backlog items. Risk to delivery, I said that could be true because sometimes when you understand the risk, you also understand the negative value. The risk will create some negative value and that is also help, help, that will also help you to prioritize the items. But when you have to select between the two options, you will always select business value. Risk to delivery is also a correct choice. But it is not better than business value. That's why we are going ahead with business value. Okay. Technical complexity does not uh, tell us how to prioritize. Okay. Just because it is complex does not mean there is a dependency. Okay. That is also an understanding to have. Technical complexity means that user story or that functionality is complex. Does not mean that it is dependent on something else or some other higher business value is dependent on that. Technical dependency will also help you in prioritizing the backlog items. But technical complexity, no. Business value, yes. Risk, yes. But B is better. That's why we are eliminating it. Estimation accuracy does not talk about prioritization of the backlog. It does not help us. It only helps us in understanding how much effort will be required. I hope I have helped you in understanding. I hope I have helped you in understanding how to solve questions. I hope I have motivated you enough to review the questions regularly. Spend good enough amount of time in reviewing the questions because it will help you in strengthening your concept knowledge. Whenever you see any concept, any term that you don't know, always look for it before you move to review the next question. I have also helped you understand and I hope that to identify the good quality question in PMP exam. Okay. I'll keep on doing this for the remaining 16 uh, tasks in this process domain as well. The mindset for this particular task that you should keep in mind is that you should always try to find out ways in which maximum value can be delivered to the customer. How can I deliver the value to the customer earliest? And if you deliver the value earliest, it will automatically become maximum as well. So you should always look to prioritize what is the biggest value that I can deliver to the customer in this project. Identify that, prioritize that and try to deliver that first. I'll see you in the next task. Thank you so much.